Let's look at device communication. Let's say we have two devices A and B that want to communicate. One of the things that we have to address in this communication is synchronization. Synchronization is simply a process by which we bridge the speed mismatch between communicating devices. So if A is faster than B or B is faster than A or they're the same speed, uh, it still works. Yes. So let's take a few scenarios. Uh, when I talk about A and B, these could be these devices could be computers. For example, a launch pad, a microcomputer, or a microcontroller. It could be devices, like for example, the LCD device that we might be working with, or any other external device that's connected. Or we can even think of think of this as a as with an analogy where we consider A and B to be people. So what happens if A talks a lot faster than B listens? So obviously there's going to be a miscommunication. So what we need is a way for them to synchronize so that the communication is perfectly uh, comprehensible to both parties. I can think of a problem. You talk too fast, Professor Yerabali. If you slow down, I could understand you better. Yes. So what you're saying is, if I if I am talking too fast, then I should slow down so that I have to, in some way, know what the there's a preset amount of time that you want me to wait for before I say the next word or the next sentence. So we have our first form of device synchronization. We call this the blind cycle synchronization where the device A will send a message to B and wait for a certain amount of time some delta predetermined delta T and then the sec send the second message and then waits again a delta T amount of time and sends the third message it's called and blind so <coughs> it's called blind because the time you wait is fixed and the time delta t is usually determined by the device b's speed which means that a has to be aware of what d's, b's configured speed is of processing and wait for that amount of time so the problem with blind is the speed of b may vary and so to make blind work, A will have to wait the longest or the worst case. So this is a very slow communication protocol. Yes, but it's, it's a useful protocol because there are a lot of devices that are, that are not sophisticated and this is always going to work if you know from the data sheet of device B what the specifications of device B are. So let's look at another alternative. The alternative that is slightly better in my mind is, is the second one which we call a busy wait. Now if device B were able to raise a flag so if device B were able to raise a flag to indicate to A that the last communication you sent, so let's say the A sends a communication and B raises a flag saying I am processing this, so hold on and wait till I'm finished processing, then B can look at that, look at that flag and keep checking the flag and the flag is when the flag is turned off so when the flag is off it then sends a next message 
So it repeatedly checks the flag. In other words, B's ace logic is gonna look something like this. Send, check, flag, and repeatedly check flag. And when you, when the flag, check flag is up, and if it's up, go back, check again, up, check again when it's not, then go back and send a next message. So this is a step up, but now we we'll require that device be, be a little more sophisticated, that it can indicate to the sender and the sender has a way of checking the flag. But I like interrupts. Let's talk about interrupts. Interrupts is even more sophisticated we're going to take this flag, which determines the status of the device B, and we're gonna do one more thing with this flag. This flag is going to signal back to A as a hardware event, which will trigger a special software action. So with interrupts, the flag, the status flag of device B, which has two states, busy with the flag up and done with the flag off the busy to done state transition in B will trigger a software event in A such that a special code called an interrupt service routine gets executed on this busy to done state transition. And this interrupt service routine will then perform the service, or in this case, send another message. So as we see, interrupts are by far the most flexible, but they do require certain special support from the system. And the support is in the form of this device being able to interrupt the processor and the processor should be able to suspend what it's doing currently, take care of this interrupt, and then resume where it left off. And since this is a much more sophisticated technique, not all devices support this approach. So it's not like we can choose between these, it's all about whether the support is provided in the particular communication system. So in this chapter, we're going to use the busy wait synchronization because it's simpler. But in the next chapter, we'll have interrupts. Okay. And by the way, there are two other, two other communication ideas which are um, used in most advanced systems. They're called polling and direct memory access or DMA. Uh, we will not be looking at those in this class, but um, you will encounter them if you're working with embedded systems in future.